You're watching I-24 News. I'm Nareet Ben. And I'm Colette Ben-David. Air Force One has landed in Rome, the next stop in President Trump's first trip abroad in office. His trip to Riyadh, Jerusalem, and Bethlehem has wrapped. And we're here taking stock of what the goals turned out to be, a little bit different than what was expected initially, and if anything concrete was actually achieved. Uh, I want to now uh, go back to John Allison, a longtime banking executive, was mooted one of the candidates to be the Treasury Secretary under Donald Trump. And if reports are to be believed, maybe something in the future in the Federal Reserve, though I know you can't comment on this. I want to talk to you about, uh, of course, now President Trump is going to be meeting the Pope, Pope Francis, uh, who's had some <clears throat> criticism of President Trump. Uh, I just wonder, his visit, the three stops he's making, I mean, how do you think that is playing home, going to this this uh, sort of three religions trip? I think it probably plays okay at home. It's, a lot of people may see it as superficial just going to see the Pope, because he and the Pope obviously don't agree very, <laughs> very well. And uh, I don't think they're going to agree, although uh, Mr. Trump is very charismatic one-on-one. -on -one. He may not be charismatic, you know, in public when he does these crazy tweets and stuff, but meeting him, he's got a lot of personalities and interesting uh, person. So I suspect he and the Pope will appear to get along, even though they don't really agree in a fundamental sense. And I think back home, it's okay, but I don't think it's, I think it's kind of viewed as a little bit of politics versus really necessary. And then the Pope a, side. he will be meeting, there is a, a summit, of course, in Europe and NATO. Again, I want to turn, you come yourself from a branch of the Republican Party that's talked about the U.S. in a sense sort of pulling back from its uh, or has, has overextended its commitments abroad. Uh, do you think uh, that this, uh, where do you think he'll fall on the NATO issue? Well, I think what he's asking for NATO is interesting, is that, that the rest of Europe pay their share. And, and I think there's a pretty strong movement in the Republican Party. Not so, it's not really so much anti-NATO, it's like, why is the U.S. paying for all this? Particularly an extremely wealthy company, country like Germany that criticizes U.S. foreign policy a lot of times and they're not paying their share of defense. And it, you know, if you want to be worried about Russia, you can argue whether you should be, why doesn't Germany cover the, just a proportionate part of, of NATO? And I think he will insist that they pay their share or he will pull back, mm. but I think he'd rather them pay their share. It's a continuous several trips where candidate president candidate Trump has had to face President Trump uh, in terms of statements and policy and those two don't always line up uh, <laughs> right right along with each other let's bring in uh, Dan Revive our Washington correspondent who's joining us now from Rome where President Trump Air Force One and his team have landed just about an hour ago Dan what do you think we should be watching out for not only in this first uh, stop in the Vatican meeting the Pope but after that when Trump has